During her time at the, at the Alliance, she led training, exhibitions and performances, as well as producing three pieces of groundbreaking historical research, Afro Solar UK, Voices for Freedom and Strength of Our Mothers. In that role, she also drove the Greater Manchester Black History Month calendar, not only bringing together a powerful collection of events, but also influencing many cultural organisations, including mine, to consider programming Black History Month events during October and beyond. She received a Hope Inspiration Award for this work, and her work with the Alliance, and more broadly, is lauded for raising the profile and challenging the marginalisation of black artists. She's a multi-award winning writer and performance poet, known across the UK and abroad, who has three published and claimed poetry collections, Style, Nearly 40, and There Will Be No Tears. Her one-woman show, The Story of Them, was commissioned in 1994 by the Institute of Contemporary Arts and, and has contributed to the curriculum for A-level English Literature and the MA in Black British Literature at Goldsmiths College. She's also two librettos to her name, Mary Seacombe, enjoyed a West End opening before touring Britain in, in 2000, and The Calling was performed by the BBC Philharmonic in 2005. This woman is already deservedly well recognised Amongst other accolades, she was awarded an OBE for her contributions to the black arts sector in 1999. And in, in 2019, she received an honorary doctorate uh, um, of, of art from Manchester Metropolitan University. The Culture Awards, the Culture Awards now provides the city with an opportunity to thank and celebrate her achievements. A tenacious and creative and collaborative person. Please welcome my friend and big spiritual sister, Sue Andy, to accept her special welcome. Because <laughs> I don't know, it's fair. It's fair. 
I always put 274 names on it because those are the people I bribed to get, you know, to get <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's the full amount of members we ever had in National Black Arts Alliance. People think that their careers is all about their amazing creativity. You know, I'm so good, I've come so far. Bullshit. <laughs> no one does anything on their own. <laughs> Anybody's success is dependent on the support of others. I get emails, right, that are about three lines long. And then after the sign off, there's about 40 lines of what they've done. Mm. You know, my mum gave me an ice cream because got me homework in other time. <laughs> BA launched at the Manchester Festival, not this festival, but the festival that Phil Jones used to run after he took over from Jeremy Shines. And do you know Jeremy Shines and Anne Tucker? They're the stalwarts of community arts. People like... And people like Stella Hall, Kath Robinson, who was chair of City of Drama. I bet most of you don't know what City of Drama was. I want to know, will we see their photos in the installation that's on one of these floors somewhere in the building? <laughs> they pushed barriers, made things happen, often without funding. I'm not trying to say it's the good old days. The good old days in the arts was full of racism and patronism. They were twins. But producers, directors, counsellors, even arts officers, help artists make art for regular people, such as my cousin. And I truly did not know that David was going to be here. But my late cousin was a boxer. He boxed at the Mexico Olympic Games. He was a champion boxer. And he often used to say to me, I was David, is he still making art? Because David and him built an installation for me at the Roman, the Roman fortress over at the Castlefield. And for Alan, David was art personified. <laughs> I want to ask this building to create a memorial wall for those who have helped us get to this point today. Like my good, good friend, the late Howard Rayner, Maggie from Lip Service, Bob Scott, even though we didn't want the games, Amy <laughs> McAvoy, you know so many names that I do not know. We've got this building, please let honour them. Beresford Edwards, who I believe started the Black History Month event. And then me, I followed, even though the Garden article denies any point of that. We get stuck on one thing in Manchester. The Hacienda is not the only club we ever had. <laughs> And the reason is it isn't the only club that black people went to. <laughs> now I know that some people say, Suanda, she's really stubborn. Well, I am. I am a Nigerian daughter. We are proud people. But I'm also the daughter of a Liverpool mother with Irish genes, so what do you expect? Of course I'm strong. <laughs> Working class women know how to push forward. And, I, and as David says, I'm so proud that my mother has been learned, learned, has been taught to A-level students up and down this country. David told you that I've got an award. I've got a number of awards, but I have got a, the, the big award. I've got the gong, not the not award, by the way, but I've got a, a gong. And if you don't know what a gong is, it's the same thing that the same Benjamin Zephaniah refused to accept on principle, even though he works for the British Council. My dog is an OBE, and I've told this story before. My friend Bavinda calls it other buggers' efforts. <laughs> now, I can't see everybody in this room, but I hope you know who you are, because I want to say, to all the bookers in this room, yeah. from me to you, thank you. Thanks.